Welcome back to Save the Good Girl, the SOE edition. And SOE stands for Shot of Erica. If you are new, welcome. Welcome to the family. So SOE stands for Shot of Erica. It's like a shot of espresso, shot of tequila, shot of green juice, whatever works for you before you get the full episodes every Friday. So every Tuesday I do this and it's just to give you a quick boost, something to think about, something to really nourish you for the week. And today we're going to talk about boundaries. Like why do we need boundaries? What's the purpose of them? And what happens when we don't know what they are and how that can lead to us understanding what our emotional capacity is. Hmm. Emotional capacity. Yep. Let's talk about that. (laughs) We will get back to this fabulous episode, but I just wanted to let you know that you can find Save the Good Girl on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. There is also a chance for you to be featured on the show. Check out the link in the description to send me a voice message. In addition to the podcast, did you know that Save the Good Girl has a blog? Be a part of VIP by subscribing to the email list on savethegoodgirl.com. So many options to stay connected. All right, let's get back to the episode. So I feel like one of the basis for a lot of arguments and confusion is because people really don't know their own boundaries and they expect others to know based on the fact that, well, that's disrespectful and that's this and that's that. They should have never done done this to me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. However, you need to know your emotional capacity so you know when to stop. You need to know what serves you and what doesn't. And what I see is people like to stretch themselves very thin. And then the outcome, they get a little upset because they're like, well, I did this and I did this and I did that and I did this. And the question is, did someone really ask you to do all of that? Or was that you just going above and beyond? Or was that you feeling like you have to be at every event? You have to say yes to everything. You have to deal. You have to compromise what you're doing to inconvenience yourself for other people, which is okay. I mean, sometimes that's necessary. I'm not going to sit here and say that, that just, you know, it's not going to happen. But we really need to understand what our boundaries are because boundaries are there for a reason. It's a point where it has to stop, right? So... Just like the border (laughs) in Canada, in the United States, there is a border. And that's how you know, okay, this is Canada and this is the United States. So therefore, when it comes to us and our boundaries, we need to create those because if not, it's going to be a free world for every and anyone to come into your territory without permission. But when you don't set those boundaries, There's no permission to be asked. If you don't have those boundaries, you don't need a passport. You don't need to show any identification. There will be no one at the checkpoint to prove like, hey, are you allowed to be here? So when you think about it for ourselves and our boundaries, whether it's a relationship, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's at work, you need to know what that looks like for you. And also don't get confused with someone else's boundaries and assume that you feel the same way because your emotional capacity could be different than someone else. And let me explain what I mean by emotional capacity. It's literally your cap for your emotions. Where is it going to stop? Where is it where it's like your cup is full, right? And if you don't know what your emotional capacities are, here's what's going to end up happening you're going to end up feeling a lot of resentment because you're going to say things you didn't mean to say. You're going to end up feeling drained because you didn't stop yourself. You didn't say, all right, you know what? This conversation, I'm I'm good, right? I'm good. I understand where you're coming from, but I'm not going to do this. Or if someone invites you to something and you just, you're not in the right space, maybe you're not having the best day, maybe there's something going on and you decide, you know what? I'm going to stay home. But what happens is when you don't know your emotional capacity and you try to kind of like brush it over and go out anyway, any little thing is going to take you off. Any little thing. Someone could step on your toes and you're like, you stepped on my toe. Like it just becomes such a big deal. And it's all because you didn't know when you should have stayed home versus going out. 
when it comes to drama, friendships, family, relationships, or et cetera, you need to know when to pull yourself out of the conversation. That's when you know your boundaries. When it gets to a point of like, okay, this is getting real heightened, you have to take a step back. But when you don't know your boundaries, guess what's happening? You're adding more fuel to the fire. And sometimes as annoying as it may be, sometimes we do have to be the bigger person because the other person is just going off on a tangent and that's not our concern. We need to focus on our emotional capacity. We need to focus on setting our boundaries and when enough is enough. And then once you know your boundaries, once you get to that place of, okay, I'm upset, I am sad, I am confused, I feel off as uncomfortable these feelings may feel I actually think it's a really great thing when you can identify the emotion because when you can identify the emotion there's a little bit of a slower process to the action and what I mean by that is I know for me like when I'm really upset like really really upset I have to take time to pause I don't want to talk to anyone for a few minutes or maybe a day. I need to light my candles. You need to have a a ritual for yourself, whatever that looks like, exercising, baking, um, whatever it is. So I tend to put my candles on. I tend to play my slow music. I tend to write in my gratitude journal because I have to kind of, you know, set myself back into a reminder like, hey, you're so grateful. And that helps me get back to a better solution that's sustainable versus me staying in in a conversation, yelling and screaming, being so upset, and it doesn't really help me get anywhere, all because I don't know my emotional capacity. So you need to know what that cap is for you. You need to know when your peace is being disrupted. And you're going to know, just like there are people waiting at the border to check you to make sure you are allowed to be here. When you have mastered your inner peace, you have like your inner ding, 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 ding. Um, mm-mm, somebody's trying to go into our territory. Uh-uh, I'm not dealing with this. I got to go. I need to pause. I need an hour. I need a day. I need a week. I need to reassess. I need to really investigate what's going on here, right? So when you know that, when you know your boundaries are set, you know your emotional capacity. Any intruder that tries to come in and disrupt that piece, whoever that may be, it won't go far because you are going to know when to stop yourself. And that's the whole important thing of knowing your boundaries. Because when you don't know them, you explode. You explode. There's nothing to hold you accountable. And at least when you understand yourself, you understand your inner peace, you understand that, mm, Me reacting this way is not going to be the best outcome. Let me pull myself out. Let me fall back. Let me call you back. Let me end the conversation here. Let me sleep on it. Give yourself time. That is the best thing. You need to give yourself time because if not, you're going to be out here wild and crazy and yelling and super emotional and super high end versus giving yourself the opportunity to really process what happened to really process what is being said to really process if somebody's giving you let's say constructive feedback and instead of you blacking on them and going crazy you're like all right i hear you give me like let me process let me really think about this because i just want to gather my thoughts and then come back to you and i promise if you do that you'll see a better reaction versus responding right away and if you don't have the answer here's a secret tip don't respond that's okay be respectful let the person know you need a little bit of time but don't respond right away give yourself time to process it is vital to know your boundaries it is vital to know your no's when the answer is no sticking to it and understanding why you're sticking to that answer not because we're being petty not because oh well whatever you did it this day i'm gonna do it that way no 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 No, 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 no. We need to understand the why. Why do I need this time off? So knowing your boundaries, knowing your emotional capacity will help you keep your inner peace intact. And also, that also shows a sign of maturity, I feel as well. I feel like, yes, sometimes people will say things out of the loop and you will explode because we're human beings and we're allowed to explode. That's fine. But at the same time, 
You really want to process what's being said because sometimes we could take things a different way. Sometimes you need to have clarification because somebody said something and you're you're like, no, I took it this way. And they're like, well, I actually meant it that way, especially if the person is texting you. So I really think that the next time you're presented with something that's making you uncomfortable, sad, angry, confused, pissed off, whatever it is, look at it as a good thing. Know your emotional capacity, know where your cap is full, know when you need to stop, know when you need to exit the conversation, and then also know when it is time for you to jump back in the ring and get ready to actually have, not fight, but have a very productive conversation to have a more clear solution that is sustained and understood. Yes? Does that all make sense? So I just, I wanted to kind of talk about that for this SOE because I see that a lot of people, they don't know their boundaries. They don't know their emotional capacities and that's causing extended, long-winded issues. And it's like, if we just take some time to process and we really take some time to understand our emotions on a deeper level, I think it it would kind of have a better, I would say flow of the disagreement, of the constructive feedback, of the confusion, of the anger, there would be a different flow to that. So now the solution is more, it's a more peaceful solution versus it being out of anger and then saying things we truly don't mean. Right. (laughs) So that's what I wanted to say about that. But let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you are aware of your emotional capacity, if you have set boundaries. Um, And if you have, how has that been working out for you? If you have not, what do you think you're going to do to get there? What steps will you take to ensure that nobody is crossing the territory and the lines without your permission? That's what we need. This is not a free for all. That's not how our lives work. Uh Uh-uh, nope. Not over here, (laughs) but I really enjoy spending time with you as always. I love spending time with you guys. And you know, this is SOE. I do this every single Tuesday, every single week, and I cannot wait to stay connected with you, to hear your feedback and to talk to you again next week. Bye. I feel like we're connecting. So let's make sure we're connected. You can find Save the Good Girl on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Did you know about the Save the Good Girl blog? Yes, there is a blog. Check out savethegoodgirl.com to subscribe to the fabulous VIP email list and be the first to know about new podcast episodes, new blog posts, and giveaways. In addition to listening to Save the Good Girl on many platforms like Apple, Google, Spotify, and many more, you can also subscribe to the Save the Good Girl YouTube channel if YouTube is more of your thing. There are so many options to stay connected and be a part of the Save the Good Girl community. For all updates, or if you just want to contact Contact me to say hello, ask me a question, or send me a comment. Check out the contact section on savethegoodgirl.com.